so welcome to Globalization and You, Lesson 1, Lecture 1. In this lecture, I want to give you an overview of the whole class. But first of all, three simple questions. Are you really going to invest in this class? Do you think it will be worth your time? Will you buy into it? What I want to do is start to help you think about the ways in which we ask questions like this more and more and more about ourselves and what we're doing because of the influence of market forces in our lives. We're always looking at whether we're making the right purchase, whether we're entering into the right contract, whether we're doing the right amount of investment in something that will give us the right amount of return. And that power of market forces shaping our personal lives is why I have entitled this course Globalization and You. I'm interested in explaining globalization, but I'm also interested in ex explaining how it has expanded the power of market forces in our own personal lives. Now let's look at the overview of the whole class. I'm going to begin by explaining what globalization is and helping you to answer that journalist on the street who puts a microphone under your nose and says, what is globalization? By the end of the course, I want you to be able to give them a really good answer. So the rest of this first lesson is about defining globalization. And then we turn to one of the things that complicates the definition of globalization, the way it's bound up with what's called neoliberalism, or a vision of uh, letting market forces shape government policy and shape personal life. And then we'll look at the component parts of global interconnection, global commodity chains, and uh, the connections that transnational corporations create uh, around the world uh, through their coordination of commodity chains. The next, the link of uh, workers uh, who do the work building the commodities that flow through those chains. Next, uh, we turn to money and financial crises that are very much globalized these days and the power of debt over many of our lives. Next, we turn to law and the globalization of law, human rights, and the struggle for global justice. Next, we turn to governance, uh, the question about whether the nation state is dead or not in the age of globalization, and the rise of market power. Next, we turn to the actual question of national territory, and whether borders uh, have been completely uh, transcended by global ties. Uh, we explore uneven development and the global city. Next, we turn to ecological change, biomedicine, and the global determinants of health. And finally, we turn to the question of how we respond to globalization. Uh, in particular, how do we respond to globalization given the huge opportunities provided by contemporary university education for understanding how it works and how it shapes our lives? Now, let me explain what each of those component parts of the course is going to look like in more detail. So, first of all, in defining globalization, we have a bit of a challenge on our hands because globalization is basically two things. It's a name, an academic name, for a set of uh, global ties that are getting stronger, more intense, more influential right around the world. And these are the ties of commodities, of finance, and of, of global health, and so on. So obviously this class is going to look at those component ties or interdependencies, as I call them. But in addition, Globalization is something else, and this is the, 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 the second meaning that's very important to grasp. That is, it's a buzzword of political speech. Globalization with a capital G swims in a sea of synonyms with other words like market power, market forces, uh, business, uh, accountability. And one of the challenges then is to tease out how globalization as a buzzword does a certain amount of political work. It, it makes it seem inevitable that we need to run our lives according to a certain sort of market logic sometimes. And that's really important to grasp at the same time as we grasp the actual real world interconnections of globalization. So by, by uh, defining globalization as two things, real world interconnections and as a buzzword, we can explore how the buzzword in turn affects those real world interconnections. Now, Key to doing that is making sense of what is called neoliberalism. And this involves a certain amount of intellectual history. We have to go back and look at folks like Friedrich von Hayek, the Austrian economist who came in during World War II to the Chicago uh, school and made the Chicago school 
of economics synonymous uh, with advocacy of free market freedoms and the, the unleashing of market forces. Back in 1944, when von Hayek published The Road to Serfdom, those ideas weren't so popular. But by working in Chicago with colleagues, uh, von Hayek and others, such as Milton Friedman, started to gain more and more um, of an audience for these ideas. And over time, politicians started to take them up. Most famously, of course, in the United States, Ronald Reagan, uh, who uh, saw Milton Friedman as his uh, own um, intellectual guide, uh, became uh, very influential in uh, expanding uh, the power of markets over the lives of Americans and other people around the world affected by American foreign policy. In the United Kingdom, Margaret Thatcher was another political leader who um, was a big fan of unleashing market power uh, over um, policy making, over, over uh, government uh, organization and over personal life. Now, in other parts of the world, other political leaders made moves that are not so commonly associated uh, with neoliberalism, but nevertheless uh, did a lot to advance the globalization of market forces. For example, Deng Xiaoping in China uh, did this using the heavy authoritarian power of the state uh, to um, forward China's integration into the global economy. Uh, in Chile, uh, back in um, the early 1970s, uh, a general, Augusto Pinochet, uh, introduced free market reforms uh, at the barrel of a gun. And uh, he actually uh, brought down a, a number of economists trained from uh, in the Chicago School to reorganize Chile after uh, his military coup. Now, we, we have, as President of the United States, another kind of Chicago boy, President Barack Obama, who many would not associate with Reagan or Thatcher, or, uh, or at least of all with, uh, with Pinochet or Deng Xiaoping, but a president nonetheless who has, uh, with his economic policy making uh, since the 2008 uh, crisis, uh, done a great deal to continue uh, neoliberal uh, ideas and to um, not, not to challenge them in the wake of the financial crisis, but basically to maintain them uh, as an influential guide to policy making in the United States. So understanding neoliberalism and the connections between the uh, theories and these politicians who've carried them out is key to understanding globalization. Doing so allows us also to make sense of the uh, critics of neoliberalism who are often called anti-globalization uh, activists. Uh, they're not necessarily anti global interconnection or the globalization of global justice at all. But they are uh, very much opposed to a globalization that's led purely by market forces. Um, the uh, banners held aloft in Seattle back in 1999 often said, no globalization without representation. And we're going to spend some time exploring what kinds of alternative globalization uh, that are not driven by neoliberal ideas that those uh, activists uh, were propounding. All of that works as a good introduction to then exploring the component ties of globalization. And we start with the most basic ties of all, the ties of commodities. Looking at how the uh, global uh, trade of commodities uh, is, is, is basically the, the core, the, 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 the driving force of global integration. And to understand globalization, therefore, as an economic uh, phenomenon, we have to trace commodity flows around the world and how they've changed over time. And doing so in turn leads us to explore the, the immense power of transnational corporations to organize those commodity chains.